Thanks for uh, speaking with us today. And where I'd like to start is the obvious. You've assumed a board position on VenturePoint. Uh, my understanding is this is the first time that you have actually joined the board of directors of an investee company. So perhaps you can run through the two or three points uh, that attracted you to the company as a board member and an investor, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. It is the, uh, the first time I've taken a board position in a company, in any company, let alone one owned by my funds. And uh, there were a number of reasons uh, behind that decision, a number of factors. Um, this bit of background for, first of all, it was um, uh, ties in to the mandate for a new fund uh, that uh, uh, we launched here at, at Bluemont called the Bluemont Innovation PE Strategy Fund, or the PE stands for Private Equity Fund. And um, very, a very uh, integral part of that, uh, the strategy of that fund is to take a private equity approach to managing um, a portfolio of publicly traded uh, stocks, small micro cap, tech and healthcare is the focus. And a part of a private equity approach obviously is uh, taking, taking board seats. Um, so that's just a bit of, a bit of background. Um, it was a fund that uh, was essentially set from day one moving a, an existing portfolio into this new structure, but I did have um, the uh, flexibility to add uh, one or two new positions to that fund um, over the course of the summer. And uh, as I would be doing this with companies I wasn't as familiar with as the ones that were already um, moved in, I wanted to find uh, a company which uh, seemed to have as little downside as possible and, of course, as much upside as possible, the, the most upside with uh, the least downside risk. And uh, as I think will become clear, I, I believe I found uh, in VenturePoint that, uh, that very appealing combination, which made it a very uh, good addition for a, a fund like this where I was uh, well, adding, quote-unquote, at the last minute, a, a new position. Uh, one of the things uh, certainly that attracted me to the company was the, the combination of the management board and advisory board at VenturePoint really are uh, world-class. It's among the best uh, combination of talent I've seen in a um, small microcap uh, healthcare company. Uh, I think most people listening would be familiar with uh, some of the members of the advisory board. A, uh, a Cleveland Clinic cardiologist um, joined recently on uh, on May 5th, Dr. Richard Krasuski. Uh, he's going to be involved in uh, uh, validating and developing applications uh, for the technology. Um, the, uh, the scientific advisory board also has Dr. Robin Barst, uh, who's a professor emeritus at Columbia University, and really a pioneer in the field of pulmonary hypertension, which is a significant uh, opportunity being validated uh, over the next year for, uh, for VenturePoint. And then looking at the board, uh, a great combination of um, healthcare entrepreneurs and uh, scientists. It just seemed to be uh, very attractive, both from the standpoint of uh, helping to ensure the success of VenturePoint as well as exactly the kind of network I wanted to be inserting myself into uh, for, you know, to benefit my investors uh, over the next six years. So um, sort of a dual uh, purpose in terms of actually uh, becoming a part of the board there. Um, the scalability of the technology um, is something that really attracted me in terms of its, uh, its upside. Um, and what I mean by that is I, I look at it as, uh, in many ways, being a platform technology uh, in, in multiple ways. Right now, it's being developed and sold for cardiac imaging purposes using VenturePoint's technology as an overlay to ultrasound. Um, my uh, due diligence uh, certainly confirmed um, uh, more than adequately that, that VenturePoint's technology really does something very special uh, with the heart, particularly with the, uh, the right ventricle. Um, uh, it does things that, that no other imaging modality, whether it be MRI, PET, or, or CAT, or X-ray does, uh, or, or ultrasound as a standalone does uh, for the right ventricle, and looks like um, very promising also in terms of broader applications uh, for, which would involve the left ventricle as well. But that's, 
you know, where we're first developing and, and commercializing uh, the technology, it's, it's exciting to me that it can also be used as an overlay to other imaging modalities. MRI, PET, CAT, X-ray, uh, you, can, you can overlay uh, Venture Points technology uh, on all of these, so really broadening out the, uh, the market opportunity significantly. And then again, it's a, it's a platform in the sense that it uh, can be used as a diagnostic tool in other diseases such as cancer. Um, which again uh, multiplies the uh, the opportunity set available uh, to VenturePoint as a company. Going back very specifically to um, how I look at it as a platform within what they're doing in cardiac imaging, uh, overlaying VenturePoint's technology over ultrasound, it's it's uh, there's some um, interesting parallels to uh, Apple uh, as a platform in that you've got a platform devices, the iPhone and the iPad, and out in the, the broad uh, Apple uh, ecosystem, you have lots of people developing apps. And those apps get sold, and Apple benefits uh, from those being sold and commercialized uh, in part by the propagation of their device and uh, through revenue sharing. Um, in the case in this one here, one thing I didn't really understand uh, is that in many ways, um, that's what we have here. There's sort of an ecosystem where we get devices into the hands of cardiologists who then validate and develop apps. And once they're developed and validated, they can be sold quite broadly commercially. So right now, there are 10 uh, hospitals with installed devices. And uh, among those 10 uh, hospitals, you have 15 different, quote unquote, apps being developed and, and validated. Once they are uh, fully validated, um, the commercial opportunities for those are, are quite interesting. Some would only be appropriate for teaching hospitals and centers of, of excellence, of which there are plenty uh, in North America. Um, but there's uh, one app which uh, really caught my attention. Uh, basically, um, and it was mentioned by uh, Dr. Case at, the, uh, uh, at St. Paul's, hospital in Vancouver um, in terms of uh, after someone has a heart attack, it is uh, something that the cardiologists want to do is understand which part of the hearts have died. Uh, very helpful in treatment uh, going forward. Right now that is done with a PET scan. PET scan is a very long involved process. Costs about a hospital at least $4,000 in Canada, more in the States. Um, you can, uh, Dr. Case believes, uh, you can use VenturePoint's technology to get the same information that you get from a PET scan, uh, except with uh, VenturePoint's technology, it's a five to 10 minute uh, process and costs about $150. So, and you know, her, her comments were, if, uh, if that kind of uh, application can be validated, then every hospital uh, would want to have a device. Um, not just the uh, cardiac centers of excellence, uh, et cetera. So um, I love the fact we've got a very low risk uh, opportunity right in front of us with um, uh, the children's um, congenital heart defect uh, diagnosis, analysis, and, and monitoring, um, moving that into adults, and uh, that there are so many other opportunities that can make this such a uh, significantly larger opportunity for the company if, uh, if indeed they're validated. So there's a long-winded uh, response to uh, a fairly straightforward question. <laughs> this is going to be an easy interview. Um, I just have to ask one or two questions. Yeah. There are a couple of things that I would like to get to, sure. uh, and that's Dr. George Adams. Yeah. He took over the reins uh, October of uh, 2010. He's accomplished a lot especially in terms of raising capital, uh, and you certainly played a very important role in assisting on that. Uh, but getting the company on track and moving it forward, um, do you think with what Dr. Adams has accomplished and the point that he's got it at now, that it is ready to go uh, fully commercialized, because obviously that's the end game here, and as part of that question, what would you see as the potential risks to really uh, rolling this out in a commercial sense? Mm -hmm. uh, complex question, complex <clears throat> uh, answer. Um, as you know, uh, the 10 devices they have out there now uh, would, would uh, in many ways, some would be considered 
really research oriented and uh, are just getting out there so the application can be developed. Some are more quasi commercial uh, type sales already. Um, <coughs> But uh, I've, I've gone through uh, the pipeline. I've, I've uh, spent a fair amount of time uh, last week with uh, VenturePoint's installation team to understand their process. Um, spoke in, in some depth with the cardiologists about their process to get to a point where they're comfortable to use it more broadly. And I think, uh, you know, this year, um, uh, George is comfortable with uh, 20 deliveries. Uh, for me, I'm, you know, it, it uh, wouldn't surprise me if we hit more, maybe 25, but it also would not uh, alarm me if, if there were fewer, you know, say 15. I think in a, in a uh, situation like this, um, just have to allow for a, a broader range of outcomes. But next year, 2012, I think, is the year where we, we, uh, we do see the breakout in sales. Um, I, I've been convinced that uh, a very significant uh, uptick in sales can be a, accomplished next year. Um, uh, but I'm going to use a crazy range, you know, somewhere between 50 um, and 150 units. I mean, there's a lot of um, uh, variables that will go into that. Uh, one of the, the board members believes that FDA approval is... Um, uh, one of the risk factors that, that we're facing. And I guess for, uh, for two reasons, I don't really look at it as a, as a risk factor. One is Dr. Robin Barst is on the FDA. She's on our advisory board and uh, leading um, uh, the development and validation of the pulmonary hypertension application. And um, she is on the, the FDA panel, which essentially approves these, uh, these imaging technologies for use. Um, so I don't see the risk in terms of getting a no uh, existing. Um, and uh, even if uh, on some uh, off chance uh, it was either delayed or, or we did get a no, the opportunity in the rest of the world still means, and this is Part of the, one of the things I mean in terms of the low risk nature of the opportunity, an FDA uh, turndown wouldn't kill the company. There seems to be enough uh, interest, if you will, rest of world um, that, uh, again, I think your downside from uh, the current prices is, is uh, quite limited. Um, so uh, uh, I... One of the reasons I, I said in, right in the beginning of this interview, I look at it as a very low-risk opportunity. I, um, uh, there are the, the, the risk factors you would normally encounter in a uh, you know, small microcap healthcare situation are largely mitigated already, um, and uh, we don't have uh, any real binary. Uh, events we're facing that where the company's either a you know big success or a zero. Again, the FDA approval for um, it would probably be the the most binary. But again, even there, uh, it's a lower risk event for VenturePoint because of rest of world uh, appetite and applications are there and approvals. I'd just like to touch on one last thing. Dr. Adams is on the public record saying that the, the obvious exit for this company is for a very large uh, multinational company. So your GE, uh, as only as an example, or a Siemens, something like that, hmm. it's big uh, on a global scale in, on the healthcare side. For it, a company like that to acquire VenturePoint, and he feels that, uh, and he stated, you know, when the company's got maybe 150 or so units in place, that that will validate uh, the technology for one of the big fellas and uh, they could look at it and say, well, with a company of our size, we can take this and roll it out into the thousands. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a reasonable expectation? Yeah, when I first heard that, it seemed low to me too. Um, but uh, the, the interesting thing was as part of my due diligence, I met with a, uh, a Manhattan based cardiologist he actually sees the number being lower um, because of this sort of um, platform app model together with uh, what validation means for adoption. He actually sees the threshold, the potential, uh, you know, install base at which uh, a GE or someone might might acquire the company as low as maybe 70 or 80 units. Um, uh, 
so you know, either way, I think we're, we're um, in in many ways, I think it would be unfortunate if the company were, were acquired after only installing 70 units or 150, because you'll clearly get uh, a lot lower uh, valuation, a lot lower price than uh, if you're uh, if you're at a higher uh, higher number. There there certainly are uh, some very good uh, comps in terms of takeouts in uh, medical imaging, um, which uh, which suggests you can get uh, significant multiples on on relatively low sales. But um, you know, if uh, for up to me, I'd rather give the company the chance to validate the technology not only in a number of different sort of sub-applications within the um, cardiac area, um, but in, you know, using it uh, as an overlay to other imaging modalities, CAT or, or PET or MRI, and, and also uh, moving it into other disease forms entirely, uh, like, uh, like cancer. I think that's where we'll get the really the, the, the most significant valuation and exit when uh, we've validated this platform across uh, um, you know a really uh, broader range of cardiac applications, uh, enough applications which, as the cardiologist I met in Vancouver suggests, it could be adopted by virtually any hospital, and then also show its uh, applicability to um, CAT, MRI, X-ray on top of the validation we're, we're seeing already in ultrasound, and then showing it in completely different disease forms like cancer. I just it. it it becomes. Uh, I know George uh, has, has stated. Uh, I believe publicly. He uh, certainly shared with me that he sees somewhere in the dollar to four dollar range, and that that makes a lot of sense to me uh, after my uh, my due diligence. But um, uh, given the multi-platform um, uh, nature of, of what we're looking at here, uh, uh, there really is. Um, uh, I think some some very interesting possibilities here. Uh, Another long and, uh, response I, to. <laughs> well, no, no, that, that's okay. You uh, <laughs> you actually threw in a number there. I was going to ask you to, you know, rub the crystal ball and perhaps come up with a valuation, but you've given me a range. Sure. Of course, then uh, what I guess what we're really looking at is hopefully that all of this will occur yep. within the next couple of years or so. Yep. Hugh, thank you very much for speaking with us today, and uh, we'll chat with you soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care.